Hi, do you know today's thought? Today I'm going to, well, you may have noticed I took a day off. Well, it was Easter weekend, so, I, you know, I gave myself a day off. But anyways, here I am back again, and today's thought is actually going to touch on, well, the main subject is going to be hypocrisy or possible hypocrisy and how Democrats are never held to account or seldom held to account for their hypocrisy. But we're also going to touch on, well, my occupation, which is real estate broker. I'm semi-retired, but I am a real estate broker license in New York, by the way, and uh, I know a few things that I could share because there was, well, you, you know about Donald Trump, right? He was found liable for, well, they want to find him $464 million for overvaluing his property. And then uh, since then, somebody did a little research and found out that uh, John Stewart, the old uh, Comedy Central guy, he's back now. I think every Monday. Uh, who knows? I never watched the show, you, even before. Uh, I don't watch it now. Anyways, uh, he was uh, accused of overvaluing his property, doing the same thing, the exact same thing that Donald Trump did. And uh, the question is, why is Letitia James not charging John Stewart the way? She charged Donald Trump. Now, I'm going to defend John Stewart and Donald Trump because, number one, they did do exactly the same thing, but they did nothing wrong. That's the main point that I want to make. They did nothing wrong. I'm a real estate broker, and I can tell you they did nothing wrong. They did what everybody does, what you may have done yourself, actually, if you uh, own a house, if you ever sold a house, or um, you, you applying for a mortgage or some kind of loan, or more important, a loan, say, a, a, you know, a home equity loan based on the value of your house. If you've done that, you've done exactly the same thing that Donald Trump and John Stewart did. So this is where the... Um, the mistake is and where the hypocrisy comes in. But first, the what happened was the John Stewart is accused of overvaluing his property by over 800 percent. And the reason that in both cases, Donald Trump and this uh, this uh, party hack, uh, this really hack judge in New York and, and Garan did the same thing looked at a tax assessor's valuation of, of uh, in Donald Trump's case, uh, Mar-a-Lago, and, and um, which I, I don't know why that would even have anything to do with uh, a judge in New York. Anyways, uh, John Stewart's home is in New York, and same thing, the tax assessor, well, uh, gave, a, I don't know the exact uh, number, uh, 90,000, something like that, I don't know, a, a low number um, um, valuation on the house for tax purposes. That's the important thing. And Donald Trump, Mar-a-Lago, uh, a value, uh, the tax assessor there, a value of only $18 million, which is, uh, obviously that's crazy in the, in the case of uh, Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago, um, there's a vacant lot a couple of, uh, within a mile or two of Mar-a-Lago, and that's going, that's on the market for $200 million. And of course, Mar-a-Lago is very big, much bigger than this lot, and it has Mar-a-Lago on it. So obviously the market value is at least half a billion or close to that, I would have imagined. Don't hold me to that. I'm not a Florida broker, so I don't know the market there. But anyways, much more than the tax assessor's valuation. And the same thing for John Stewart in New York whatever valuation a tax assessor put on the property, that's um, a fraction of what the market value would be. And that's because tax assessors, well, number one, you don't know, this is the point, you don't know the value of a property until until it gets sold. Somebody could put, uh, I could say I want $200,000 for my house, all right? I could put it on the market, I say I want $200,000, and maybe it's a hot market, and maybe I'll get offers of more than $200,000. And if it's a very 
very you know punk market, then maybe uh, it'll be less than two hundred thousand dollars that I will be offered, and I'll have to take a lower offer. You see this all the time. Some celebrity sells his home, and he, he paid uh, you know he wanted twenty million for it, and he ended up sending, selling it for seventeen million or something. Happens all the time because you don't know value is in the eye of the beholder, and especially now John Stewart. I don't know how much his name means, but Donald Trump on a property. There's this other concept that the tax uh, um, IRS knows about this very well called goodwill, which is hard to value. Goodwill, the value of a name. If I put up a, a building next to Trump Tower that's identical in every respect, construction-wise, the pink, right down to the pink marble and the golden staircase, exactly the same as 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 Trump Tower, same quality tenants, and etc. You put it, and we both, let's say, go to market at the same time. Uh, Donald Trump is going to get most likely will get more for his building than mine, even though they're identical. Why? Because his is called Trump Tower, and the Trump name has value. My name, Gene Schwimmer Tower, uh, Schwimmer Tower, uh, not so much, not so much. So you see that, that you see that all the time. You see why um, somebody who makes sunglasses they will approach, say, uh, Calvin Klein, the fashion kingpin, or, or Ralph Lauren. And and license his name to make sunglasses, even though um, Ralph Lauren probably knows nothing about sunglasses. He's not going to be involved in the manufacture. He'll get a royalty, though, for from each sunglass. And why would a sunglass maker pay a royalty to uh, Ralph uh, Lauren? Because if it's a Ralph Lauren sunglass, you uh, set up a pair of sunglasses, you're going to get, you'll be able to sell them for more, and you'll sell more of them. That's called goodwill, the value of a name. And it's very difficult to put a value on that. And for all of these reasons that I mentioned, value being in the eye of, a be, of the beholder, and goodwill, and so on and so forth, uh, location, 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 etc. A tax assessor, even on my own home, my real estate, there's a formula that, that tax assessors use. They take kind of an estimate, you know, guess of the value of the, the house, I don't know, the market, whatever, but there's a, a, a percentage uh, that they will multiply the, um, well, usually they'll take the, well, what they'll do, they would take the sales price, actually, the sales price of the house, because that's a set value that you know, that's set in stone. The house was sold the last time it was sold, and you know what it was sold for, so uh, that's one way of valuing. Now, I don't want to go too far on a limb with this, because I'm a leasing broker, okay, so I don't buy and sell properties and even when I sometimes would kind of tangentially get involved with that um, I did commercial real estate so I really know nothing uh, uh, about how tax assessors value um, residential properties for property tax purposes or commercial uh, for that either I just know that there's a formula that they use however derived and it's always less than the market value of the property so that's why I'm saying that that John John Stewart and Donald Trump, they did the exact same thing. They, John Stewart, it doesn't matter he overvalued his property. He sold the property. That's the thing. Now, Donald Trump valued his property for a loan, but the, the bank, Deutsche Bank, did its own due diligence and decided based on its due diligence, how much they were willing to lend um, Donald Trump. And there's no, um, it had nothing to do, it doesn't matter what value Trump Put on his property, and, and the loan application even ha has a disclaimer that don't take my word for it. You do your own due diligence, uh, Deutsche Bank, and they did, and they were very happy. They got paid back with interest. Everything was fine. Now, John Stewart, it's a little different because he actually sold his property. So uh, I, I don't know what the complaint is that he. Um, he, he, he wanted, uh, I don't know, 15 million or whatever, I don't know the exact figure, 15 million, 17 million, I think, something like that, for his property, and somebody's willing to pay it, fine, end of story, he's got a, ca a capital gains tax, he'll pay taxes on that, I assume, and uh, end of story. But for Letitia James, you see now, as I said, they both did the same thing, and they neither did anything wrong, but if she charged Trump, 
and Stewart did the exact same thing, she must charge him. That's only fair unless we're talking about a two-tier uh, system of justice where you get charged for doing the exact two people, get charged for doing exactly the same thing and indicted and fined and, and a decision made by a judge without a jury, remember without a jury, uh, it, it is the same. Um, they should be treated the same. Now, will they be? I wouldn't hold my breath, breath uh, waiting for that. But somebody should uh, uh, maybe go on John Stewart's show and, and mention that and say, uh, I would do it. Uh, John, you did nothing wrong, but neither did Donald Trump. And is it not, is it not a rank hypocrisy, though, to charge Trump and not you? So I actually, so I said she must, what I should have said, I said she must charge Donald Trump, but actually she must treat them the same. So either charge uh, I mean, must charge John Stewart. Either charge John Stewart or drop the charges against Donald Trump because, again, they did exactly the same thing. And that's my thought for today. Thanks for stopping by. If you could subscribe, that would really be great. Share this video with anyone you think would benefit from it. Your thoughts are welcome in, in the comment section below the video. But most of all, come back and see me again. I would love to see all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, Bye.